In this video, I'm giving you my five predictions for the NAM show for new products and reasons why I think they're going to be coming out. Let's get straight into it with Focusrite. Focusrite have been advertising their Scarlet 2i2 third generations quite a lot recently, which makes me think there might be an upgrade on the horizon. They've not released a new version of this for three or four years now, and it's about time in that cycle that they updated that unit. Combined with the fact that over lockdown they focused on the podcasters with the vocaster, I feel focus Focusrite may have neglected musicians a little bit, with the exception of the very quiet release of the Claret Plus, where they improved the converters. Now maybe the Scarlet is overdue a converter improvement. The converters are the same as they are in the Vault series interfaces from Universal Audio, but Universal Audio have implemented them in a way that the unit sounds better. And if you don't believe me, I've got this video here where you can hear the two side by side with the same conversions, and the Vaults just sound better. Speaking of the vaults, they also have vintage mode, which adds actual harmonics to the signal rather than just a high-end EQ curve like air mode. The vaults also have a compressor, a built-in analog hardware compressor circuit. This is a feature that is indicative of other brands pushing the envelope with interfaces in this price bracket, and I think Focusrite need to keep up. Other devices such as the Evos and the Lewitt Connect 6 host Smart Gain and Auto Gain, and the Lewitt even has DSP for onboard processing at a very competitive price point. This is something Focusrite haven't really dived into yet. And if we take into account products like the Audion ID series, which have a really good monitor control software for mixing and balancing levels in your headphones, this is far superior than the blend onboard blending dial-in thing that the Scarlet's got that I think is just getting left behind. A few interfaces still have it, and I think everyone needs to go down the ID route and use a software headphone mixing application where possible. So maybe we'll see this on the Focusrite Scarlet. Moving on to Universal Audio, there's a lot of buzz on social media, particularly in forums, about new Apollos coming out. No, I don't think this is possible. Now, I do work with Universal Audio quite closely. I couldn't tell you if, if they had something coming. As far as I know today, they don't have a new version of the Apollos coming. However, there may be an upgrade. A lot of people criticize UA for having out-of-date converters, but realistically, I just this just doesn't make sense. The X16s have a dynamic range of 133 decibels. Leave a comment if you can name an interface with a higher dynamic range than that. Now, what they might do is move those converters and pass them down to the X8, the X6, the X8P, and the X4s and the Twins, but they still have killer dynamic ranges of 129 decibels. So. I don't really see what the complaints are about. Now, I am aware Sweetwater are doing some pretty heavy sales on the Apollo stuff, which would make me think usually that there might be a new Apollo coming, but like I said, I don't think that's the case. Let me know your theories and your thoughts, and also what you want to see in the comments below. Now, what I think we may see from Universal Audio, and again, I, I can't confirm or deny this at this point, is a 19-inch eight channel rack mounted version of the vaults with vintage mode and compression on eight channels. I think that's the next logical step after the 476P with its expanded IO. And I think this would be a good addition to the range. UA also seems to be pushing the native stuff quite a lot. So I think we're gonna see more plugins added to the native library, the native bundles and the Spark subscription. And the more the merrier. All right, moving on to audience and the release of the Evo SPA and the ID24 already this year suggests that they might have quite a few releases coming later this year. Again, I don't know if this is true or happening or not, but I would suggest they will also release an eight channel 19 inch rack mounted version of the ID series, which I think would be great. However, I'm hesitant and I can't decide because this would probably conflict with sales of the new Evo SPA and even the Evo 16 so maybe they'll leave it a year before they do that but also maybe there'll be a new version of the ASP series ex preamp expansion racks which I think would be pretty sick because there's a few ways they could improve those in my opinion. SSL make it onto this list. Now, they have been advertising some severe price drops, which if you've seen this video, you'll know that that really pissed me off for various reasons. The price drops may be indicative of them realizing that their products, quite frankly, have been overpriced for a while. And in a world where plugins are catching up with analog, they need to remain competitive. And also maybe supply chain issues, moving production to China, whatever, I explore it quite a bit in that video. Now, what I'd like to see from SSL is something new. I would 
like to see them meet Wes Audio in the hybrid realm and digitize their hardware. Wes Audio have their Dion, which is a digital stereo bus compressor based on the G bus, and I think it'd be wicked if SSL did the same thing. I'd be very tempted to buy one of those. But we'll have to wait and see because typically these giants of the industry are slow to react to new technology, and it's arguable they ride on the legacy on their legacy products. Another product I noticed had a quite a significant price drop relatively was the Black Lion Audio 2x2 Revolution Audio Interface. Maybe, and I think and I hope, there's a Mark II version coming with less distortion and less noise because the converters and the headphone amplifier and the output of that interface were really good. I just didn't like how it sounded. It was trying to be something I don't think it was. So maybe a Mark II could address those issues and improve the product. Now I'm really excited to see the 500 series version of their Bluey compressor. I will bring you news if I can get hold of one of those. So my overall thoughts are that we actually won't see that many releases. I feel this NAM show, only nine months since the last one, is diluting the waters a little bit while they try to move the show back from June last year to January next year because they obviously missed two years due to that thing that happened and caused us all to be at home for a while. Talking about audio interfaces. And also with the impending economic crisis, this is not tax advice, due to global the global situation, I, I, I don't think people are going to have too much disposable income in the next year or so. So I think it would make sense for companies to push what they've already got. But I like being proved wrong. And I'm sure you guys will point out very kindly in the comments whether you think that's a load of BS or not. But I can tell you from my personal experience, my affiliate sales are down this year. Those are the links in the description to products that we use in the studio. All YouTubers do it. It's a way of us making money because creating this content takes time. It takes equipment and all that will cost money and it's not free. Free. So if you do fancy supporting the channel, using those links in any YouTuber's description is a great way to support those guys if you found value in the content. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And one more thing is, I have some news about NAM because I, for the first time, I'm going to this year's NAM show with the Produce Like a Pro guys, and I absolutely cannot wait. I've got a massive list of people and brands and companies I'm going to go meet. I want to nerd out on drums, live sound gear, studio gear, and I'll probably be doing some stuff for uh, Warren and the Produce Like a Pro guys as well. So if you're going to be at the NAM show, come over and say hi. It'd be great to chat with some of you, and um, you'll see me because I'll be wearing my branded cap that you've probably seen in in previous videos. Right, I've been Ed Thorne. It's been emotional. I'll see you on the next one.